Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is the first in a series looking at the compatibility of two moon signs. I've never done this before, mainly because I focused on the compatibility of sun signs. I always felt that that was more important. And then it just hit me today that it would be interesting to explore it from simply that angle, because I think sometimes this can be a very big factor in why uh, two people decide to go their separate ways or they just can't make it work because their emotional reactions to life are, are so different and uh, the two people can't understand each other. Or you could even say they're so similar that they don't offer support to the other because they're both going through the same thing. So an example would be if two people have the moon in Aries and they're both hotheads and they both are very reactive, they can tend to react to each other and create a lot of drama in the relationship, a lot of um, fighting. You know, I'm not talking about physical fighting necessarily, but just a lot of arguments and instead of really getting to the heart of what they are sad about, angry about, frightened about, there's just a lot of heat, you know? And if you have two moon signs, uh, they don't have to be the same sign either. And neither would two fire signs have to be the same sign, but you know what I mean? Um, two, fi uh, two, uh, water signs could drown each other out because they're both so emotional, so subjective, and they come to life with this um, emotional uh, signature that means that when when um, something bothers them or moves them, they are just very likely to express it in one way or the other. And let's say they're with an air sign or, or they're with uh, an earth sign, that could be problematic because that person may not appreciate the other individual's emotional expression, self-expression. They might uh, pride themselves on not being emotional. And so they don't want a partner who is emotional because either they don't know what to make of it, it bothers them, it, you know, it threatens them in some way emotionally, or they just think that it's a sign of weakness there's all these different things that can happen. So I'm starting out um, this series with looking at Aries and Pisces moon signs together. Suffice it to say, you have to look at the whole picture. You have to look at where the moon, where the moon is in both of the person's charts, uh, what their sun signs are, and so on and so forth. Um, you're not going to get a full picture just through the moon. However, it might be a make or it might be a make or break situation in some cases for sure because um, the emotional self-expression is certainly a very important part of relationships in general. So um, let's look at what they might have in common emotionally both might actually be emotional. And like I, I had mentioned, um, air signs, which are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, and earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, these signs, as far as I'm concerned, are the least emotional. And so there are signs that are, are not uh, acclimated to uh overt displays of emotion. And that can, that doesn't necessarily have to be just, um, challenging emotions like sadness. It might even be if they're really, really happy, they stay on that even keel and they're not too, um, expressive when it comes to their joy. And so what can happen is that if a person is either a fire or an, an a water sign, if they are with such a person who is an air or um, an earth moon sign, 
uh, they may feel like that person isn't very um, feeling altogether. They may feel like the individual is too detached. And that can be unsatisfying for such a person who has a more emotional and a more emotional nature. So these two signs both express emotion. Now Pisces expresses it from a very subjective point of view based on what they have personally experienced. So, um, or somebody they know has experienced. Pisces is a little bit different than the other water signs um, because it's the last water sign. So I like to think of Pisces as the most uh, empathic and psychic of all the water signs. But, you know, that's just how I feel. That doesn't necessarily translate uh, altogether. But I feel like uh, there's that old soul quality with Pisces that makes them very... Um, in touch with the collective, because that's what the house that Pisces rules, the 12th house is connected to the Akashic records, um, which is the record of all of creation and, um, past lives. I mean, well, you know, the Akashic record can, you know, be about that as well, but just, Karma is connected to the 12th house, um, sacrifice. So, um, the idea that we're supposed to, um, give of ourselves that, that the ego, you know, not having an ego, uh, you know, being e egoless and not concerned with the self, more concerned with service to others from the ultimate point of view and Pisces opposite sign Virgo is more in the practical application of this, you know, uh, with the sixth house, the earth house, the service to others in terms of work, this is more just like one's life being one giant sacrifice on every level. And so the person with the moon in Pisces is coming from that place where Aries, all the fire signs, and that includes Leo and Sagittarius as well, coming from that place of creative self-expression. So, um, emotions kind of inspiring the person to create, which actually is a universal type of, uh, an action. So in other words, if you're crying alone in your room, that's a Piscean thing, or that's a Cancer or a, um, a Scorpio thing. Although Scorpios would probably never admit to crying, but you know what I mean? Um, that is like, you know, remembering something that happened to you or if something just happened to you, it makes you cry and you're thinking about it. It's very subjective. It's very much what you have personally experienced. A, um, a fire sign is guided more by ideas, uh, situations. So these are more objective situations that touch the person and make them want to, you know, inspire them to create in whatever way they feel, um, called to do so, you know, so, um, it's not really coming from the individual self, although that's not good. You know, of course, everybody, who is an artist or who is creating something, um, they are drawing from their individual lives too, but I'm talking about the extent of that. And for the water science, it's all about the personal situation. And what they say about art is that even when you are inspired by certain events in your own life, in your own life, you have to take that and make it universal. You can't just stay in your own little, um, world and you have, you have to make your world, um, something that other people can relate to and that they can, you know, see themselves in, and then it becomes more universal. 
So um, that I, I put down here that both can be creative. And so that goes along with that. And you would be surprised how important that can be. Because again, if somebody is um, very creative and they're with somebody who's not creative, there can be that sense that they're not compatible, that the, that the other person doesn't appreciate creativity. Now they might consume other people's creativity, but in terms of valuing the need to create, they may not be supportive of their partner if their partner wants to take it very seriously and maybe do it professionally. Or, you know, let's say somebody loves to play the guitar and they, they're not like fantasizing that they're going to become uh, famous or anything like that, but they just want to um, express themselves in that way on a regular basis. And the other person's like, no, you know, you shouldn't be hanging out in bars. You should be at home with me all the time and all that. So that, that can, um, come about because the other person doesn't respect the need for that. And, um, so both people here may have that sense of need. I also put down that they both can be fun loving and spontaneous. Now, Aries certainly fits that bill because Aries, um, is a fire sign and, and there's always that inner child with all fire, uh, energies. And this is in the moon sign. So this is, um, emotionally having a playful spirit. And yes, um, I'll get to where Aries can be challenged emotionally when you have the moon in Aries. And by the way, when I'm saying Aries and Pisces, you know, know that I'm talking about the moon and not the sun sign. So, um, Aries can be quite, um, spontaneous, which means that it's, it's, it's coming from the heart. It's very genuine. And so it can be, that's another thing too. I didn't put this down, but both of these signs are romantic. And really to me, that's what, uh, romance is, is where it's the sense of, treating life as something that is not ordinary and that you're, um, you know, seeing things as larger than life and then, uh, running with it. Being romantic is another thing that if one person is romantic and the other person isn't, that can be problematic because the person who is romantic, if they see that their partner isn't, they may assume that that person doesn't care about them. And of course that's not necessarily true because people, because people, um, you know, express their affection in different ways, but I think it can still, uh, bother a person who's like that. And I think it, it, it kind of, um, speaks to, a person's demeanor anyway, at a, at a deeper level, again, like spontaneity and also viewing life, uh, not just seeing life as this thing that we have to check off different things that we've accomplished on a list, but that we can actually have fun, that we can, that we can, um, treat life as poetry and dance and everything that is, um, part of imaginative play. And, um, so that sense of over seriousness that can really kill a relationship. If one person is very, um, kind of dour and things like that. So that's another reason why this is so important. Um, and I, I think that an extension of that too, is that Aries is a very positive sign. And so Pisces, you know, if somebody has the moon in Pisces, I would, be, um, pretty well convinced that they probably have had some kind of trauma in their background. That may not be true hundred percent of the time, but, um, it doesn't, it, it really doesn't hurt to assume that because a lot of times I think 
I'll be correct about that. Like if I've done private readings and that has occurred. And the reason this is important to note is because when somebody has had a traumatic background and trauma can run the gamut, it doesn't have to be like you see somebody drop dead in front of you, or you had a parent die when you were five years old. It can be, um, constant, um, abuse that it could be verbal abuse. It doesn't have to be like, you know, beatings or anything like that, but it can also be, um, neglect. It can be feeling that you're not, uh, your voice is not heard, that you're not being, um, cared for on the emotional level that you're being shut out somehow, it can, it can run the gamut, like I said. And when people have the moon in Pisces, they're already going to be very sensitive as it is. And so they will tend to take things to heart, even things that somebody else might say, well, I, you know, my parents were both workaholics and I hardly ever saw them, but you know, uh, it just gave me more time to myself and they can see the positive side of that. And they're not as needy emotionally for that kind of interaction. And so not every, um, not every moon sign is going to need the same amount of, uh, emotional care, if you will. But, um, the thing about Aries is that Aries can have anger management issues. Again, when I'm saying Aries, I'm talking about the moon sign. Obviously the sun sign is going to be very important. Now I just did a, um, a video not too long ago where I was looking at the combination of having the sun in Aries, uh, I'm sorry, the sun in Libra and the moon in Aries because somebody requested that. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting, uh, you know, challenge for me to look at that. And one of the things that I, I just like did it, uh, extemporaneously, I didn't even write anything down. Like I'm typed out here, my thoughts in advance. And I, I thought to myself about that combination. I thought, you know, I bet there's a lot of pressure that builds because Libra is a very, um, even sign and, and reasonable sign. But when you have the moon in Aries, there's a, a very, there's an impatience, there's a, a impe impetuous type of a behavior or reaction, which means that the person is very rash and, and immediate in their, in their response. And this is, this, these are the emotions so it makes it, it can make the person emotionally volatile. And for somebody with the moon in Pisces, this can make them feel as if that person is very uh, insensitive. And even, and again, if Pisces has gone through some kind of trauma in their childhood that involved ha having a parent who was a real hothead, who didn't have a lot of emotional control, then that can kind of re traumatize them as well. But because, um, Pisces tends to have learned helplessness or kind of that victim mentality, the moon and Pisces, or they, you could also say that self-sacrificial nature, that caring more about somebody else's emotional well-being than their own, they may um, not really respect their, their own needs and that can lead to them tolerating uh, a situation that they shouldn't be tolerating. But Aries is a protective sign. So there can be an instinct of protecting the underdog with Aries that can feel very safe for Pisces because it's a masculine energy. We're talking about the, the masculine and the female energy is coming together. And by the way, it doesn't matter what your gender is. You could have, um, you know, the woman be the moon in, in Aries and the man, man be the moon in Pisces. And the man in this relationship might be more 
apprehensive and the woman is more brave. There's, uh, you know, Aries is ruled by Mars, which is the God of war to, in order to be the God of war, you have to be, um, somebody who is ready to go into battle. And that means that the person's brave. So Aries people is not only not afraid of their anger, um, or afraid of somebody else's anger, they may even erroneously believe that if things are too calm, that there's something not quite right. And so uh, one of the things that I've, I've observed with Aries, and this to me can be in any prominent like inner point or inner planet position, is a tendency to be trollish or otherwise provocative with another person. So in this case, it would be emotionally, being emotionally provocative, pro trying to provoke emotion in somebody else so that they can feel like there's some kind of spice to the relationship because they might feel bored if everything is too calm. You know, that desire for conflict can come up and it might be subconscious. And I think uh, that was something I didn't mention when I did that video with the sun and Libra, because Libra always wants, wants to be the peacemaker, but there might be something unconscious with that combination, for instance, that might lead the person to um, be, provo be provocative and not even realize that they're doing so. And Pisces is so aware of undertones that they can really feel all of these things. And even though, and, and with Pisces moon, they may have difficulty expressing their anger. So it could come out in passive aggressive ways or even more absurd. Um, I, well, maybe that's a strange word to use, but let's say that the Pisces moon person is displeased with some aspect of the relationship with the other individual, instead of just like bringing it up, they might, who knows, maybe they would have some kind of other relationship in the meantime, because they don't want to either hurt that person. They don't want to cause conflict. So they would rather get involved in something else which is not going to make their partner thrilled either just so that they don't have to have that unpleasant conversation. Pisces can be the moon in Pisces, just like the sun in Pisces can feel like a victim. And that can lead to in the extreme case, something called um, covert narcissism, which is the opposite of the more, well-known type of narcissist who is overtly uh, malignant. We call them a malignant narcissist because they very um, openly engage in deplorable negative behaviors that um, other people respond to very negatively but they, they don't, they're unapologetic for it. They might feel entitled to act any which way. The covert narcissist is much more, um, subtle. They're not necessarily malevolent. Um, they are more attention seeking They're And even with attention, they're trying to gain sympathy from others. Um, and so they may play the victim, uh, by always feeling sad and they need somebody to cheer them up. So they're always like, they're seeking energy from others. That's what narcissists do because they don't have the means within themselves to kind of nourish themselves. So they're looking to feed off of other people. That's basically what is going on. And this, the origin of this, uh, I mean, there might be karmic reasons, but in terms of this lifetime, 
they might have severe abuse that renders them um, pretty dead inside where they don't have a lot of emotion. And this is, you know, Pisces people that are narcissists can be dangerous. If they are very wounded, they can be quite dangerous because they're very manipulative. They know who is going to be touched by certain things that they say and how to wrap them around their finger. They're just very emotionally intelligent. And that can be very devious um, for somebody who is unaware that this is happening to them. And we're talking about decent people who are probably also empaths themselves and they don't even know it. And they don't know that they have, they have to really protect themselves from predators. So, um, what am I saying here in, in, uh, you know, to, to wrap this up, am I saying it's impossible for these two signs to get together? Absolutely not. Um, what can happen is that the Aries person can be protective and make the Pisces person feel safe. And that means that uh, the Aries is a very generous sign. Um, yes, the moon in Aries is difficult if other factors cooperate because, you know, you have to look at your Mars. If you are the one that has Aries moon sign, look to see how see if there's any aspect to Mars in the chart, in your chart, because if you have a trine, so if Mars is in another, um, fire sign, like Sagittarius, for instance, there might be a constructive expression of anger and the person may be very colorful emotionally and very like, uh, lively, but they might be more e even tempered and look to the sun sign, you know, is a sun sign also, uh, you know, is it, is, is, is it a sign that tends to get angry itself? Um, and just see what else is going on in the chart and you'll see if it's, um, more or less problematic, but if you're the one with it, how do you feel about it? Um, and um, as for the Pisces, if you have the moon in Pisces, understand that the more that you can honor yourself and see yourself as just as worthy as the people that you care about, that will be a very important um, understanding for you because you cannot, even if you think that it's the spiritual thing to do, to care more about other people than yourself, that it's egotistical to care about yourself. The truth is the application of that is not going to really um, wash because when, when we neglect ourselves in favor of somebody else, it doesn't help that other person. Um, there has to be balance, you know, think about the temperance card, that sense of, um, the practical and the spiritual melding together. Um, people who put their spiritual ideals into everything that they do and they don't think about the practical application, they can find that it doesn't really gel the way that they think it's going to gel because um, we're living in this world and we have worldly experiences and um, sacrificing for others can only go so far. We have needs as well. We have material needs. It's like if you give away everything to charity and you have nothing for yourself, eventually you're going to have to get, get something from somebody else and they're going to have to give you charity if you don't have the means to, you know, obtain it from something. So we have to, we have to always uh, include ourselves in the equation. And a lot of times you will see people who are trying so desperately to be do, a do-gooder that when they um, give to others incessantly and they neglect themselves, the anger or the negative emotion comes out in other ways. 
it can come out through passive aggressive um, means. And with, with Pisces, sometimes this can be like um, escapist tendencies that lead to forgetting, and I'm putting that in air quotes, certain things that they had promised to do for another person. And they may not realize that they're resenting that person and they don't want to give that person what that person wants. So they conveniently forget to do something and, and those kinds of things. So being authentic, being true to yourself, having boundaries, that's a big one for Pisces. What you will tolerate from another person, um, being very aware of how other people make you feel. I don't, I'm not saying that they have the power to get you to feel certain things, but we feel better in some people's company than others. And that's just how it is. So being just aware is so important. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I think I'm going to do more of these because they are fun to do. And uh, if you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.